The Democratic Party, in my view, has been taken over by the political left. Um, the candidate, the 2016 candidate of the Democratic Party would have been Bernie Sanders if Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Donna Brazile hadn't fixed the primaries. Bernie Sanders is the face of the Democratic Party. That's where the troops are. That's what, I mean, Chuck Schumer is much more intelligent than he's coming across these days, and that's because he's looking over his left shoulder at the Bernie Sanders forces. Um, and who is Bernie Sanders? He's a lifelong communist. He's a supporter. He, he chose to have his honeymoon in Moscow at the height of the Soviet Empire for crying out tears. All he's done all his life is support communist causes. And when, he says Denmark is his model. No, it is. It is Cuba. It was Russia during the height of the Cold War. That's who Bernie Sanders is. And all he can say is tax the, well, the rich. Give everything away free. Of course, nothing is free. Not in this life. Um, and uh, you know, tax the way. I'm, I'm on his, you know, get, I'm a follow his Twitter feed. And that's all he ever says over and over again. So Bernie Sanders is the heart and soul right now of the Democratic Party. And they have two Sandersites, um, although one of them actually supported Hillary. I think uh, Perez did. Lunatic leftist Keith Ellison, I, you know, candidate of the Muslim Brotherhood for crying out tears. For, as an adult, that is until he was like 30, he was a raving, anti-Semitic, anti-white racist, anti-American uh, agent for Louis Farrakhan, the biggest racist in the country. Um, that's who Keith Ellison, those are the two heads of the Democratic Party today. Um, which I think is tragic for the country, absolutely tragic. I am waiting for Democrats to wake up and reject them. Uh, why, do, what, why do progressives, that's every term, the, the left is brilliant at politics and uh, everybody who's a conservative in this room should copy them. Don't become like them, but watch what they do. So they, all, all the words, liberal. We hated liberals. I, mean, I, I, you know, I was part of the anti-war movement, the new left, um, that or, you know, all of them are now in the Democratic Party. We hated liberals because they were liberal. <laughs> um, progressive. There's nothing progressive about having politics and a program which hasn't had a new idea since 1848. Uh, I mean, it's socialism. What is the Democratic Party about today? It's redis redistribution. Obamacare, it's not about health care. It's about insurance. And it's about redistribution of income. And that's why it doesn't work. It was to snooker young people into, who are struggling but are healthy into financing older people like us who are <laughs> not healthy, uh, and, and, and have money. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, that's what the Democratic Party does. But why do they do this? It's because progressives believe that over the rainbow, there's this wonderful future where there's no racism, no sexism, no homophobia, no Islamophobia, no, no war, no poverty. It's called, now it's called, it used to be called communism. And it was socialism, now it's called social justice. This is the vision. Well, if you actually believe, because America is a very wealthy country if you look at it, that you can feed everybody, give everybody a free education, feed everybody, it's a right, health care is a right. What it is is a right to stick your hands in somebody else's pocket and subsidize yourself, that's what, it is. That's what that means. Um, if you really believe that you could have a world where everything, everybody's taken care of uh, and that there's no conflicts, um, what crime would you not commit and what lie would you not tell? Or if you can't commit the crime, what crime would you not support? And that's why, I mean, one of the leaders of the Women's March, Rosmia Oda, 
is a terrorist. She's convicted. She blew up a supermarket, killed two students, uh, spent 10 years in jail, and then was released in one of the idiotic prisoner exchanges the Israelis seem compelled to do all the time. Um, she's the he a hero of the Women's March. Anyway, so how is it that we have a civil war? You have a civil war, we look back to the, the big one, when you have completely irreconcilable worldviews. Freedom and slavery can't live together. There's got to be a war. If you look at our founding, and go back to this e pluribus unum, the idea is this, and it's it, you know, the Constitution doesn't use the word white or black, male or female. They're not in the Constitution. Why? Because with the founders' idea, they were, and I, I have to say, I, this, this country could only have been founded by Protestants. <laughs> and that's because they, what the Protestant idea was that there can't be a human institution that's a mediation between God and the individual. The individual it relates directly to God. That's the Protestant idea. And so that's enshrined in our founding that all men are created equal by, their, by the creator and are equal in the eyes of the creator. And therefore government cannot treat them unequally. That is the revolutionary idea on which this country was founded. Therefore, we, as a country that was created by people who came from all different countries, different languages, different religions, the idea was we don't judge you by your origins. We judge you on your merits. The individuals are equal before the law. We look at the individual, not the group that you came from. That's the fundamental American idea. And the Democratic Party today is driven, and of course, it's a big party. And this is a big, these are generalizations that I've made. And I understand that there are very decent people in the Democratic Party. But the, de but the ideology of the Democratic Party today is called identity politics. And if you are a leftist, you actually understand or you describe this as cultural Marxism. And what does that mean? Well, Marx ha had this false idea that the world is divided into oppressors and oppressed. Um, and he had the idea that democracies, capitalist democracies, were also oppressors and oppressed. If you remember the opening of the Communist Manifesto, the history of all hitherto existing societies is the history of class struggle, and then he, he identifies them. Um, there were feudal lords and uh, serfs, there were slave owners and slaves, and so forth. And in capitalism, there were wage slaves. The proletariat class is wage slaves. So it's that, it's that model. It was wrong when he said it. 100 million people have been killed in its name. It's still wrong. And what the left has done is to extend this model of the oppressor and the oppressed to race. It's not only its class, race, gender, sexual orientation. Everywhere they look, they see oppression. I mean, let's take the, the most, you know, the hardest case, if you will, black people. If America, you know, the word oppression, let's just sort of parse that. If you find the heat oppressive, when you use that term, oppression, or the oppressive heat, what, see a big exodus from this country of black people? No, on the contrary, you see Haitians risking their lives to get here. Why, to be oppressed? No, because in America, a Haitian, despite the fact, of course there are bigots around, there's always gonna be bigots, but America, in America, a Haitian, and remember that Haiti has been a free country run by black people, 
for over 200 years. But a Haitian in America has more rights, more privileges, and more opportunities than any Haitian in Haiti. That's just the reality. That's the, that's the reality we live in.